the recording has also been switched on my dear friends welcome to rotary club of vishakhapatnam i request our rotarian jason murthy garu to please go ahead with the rotary song i'll be sharing the rotary song on the screen just a minute my dear friends just yes, unmuted eh? and yes yes sir please unmute sure my dear friends let us all raise for the rotary song please yes, join मानवकी सहायता आखरी इसका नाम रोटरी 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 इसका नाम रोटरी सकल विश्व में बड़ा न प्रेम भाव आखरी इसका नाम रोटरी 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 इसका नाम रोटरी पूंज पटे कामगार मिलकर करे कारोबार अपने देश की करेंगे एक साथ चाकरी इसका नाम रोटरी 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 इसका नाम रोटरी सकल विश्व अपना नाम सब समान समझना सबको मार्ग यही बताना इसका नाम रोटरी 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 इसका नाम रोटरी थैंक यू सर थैंक यू thank you jason garu that is the spirit of uh, rotary clubs yes sir. thank you thank you so sir. my dear friends uh, we are here for uh, the speaker meet today so today's main agenda will be the speaker meeting but along with that let us share a couple of services that we have executed in the last one week i request our secretary godavarti shrinivas garu to share the information about various services conducted in the last week please unmute sir hello friends this week we we did two service projects uh, one is world newspapers given to netra vidyalaya uh, school for the blind and uh, second one is uh, we given the check 12000 uh, check for uh, education to poor people this is two uh, we did in this uh, uh, week thank you thank you all hello thank you thank you secretary for the information yes my dear friends so today finally we are here to discuss about the culture and the importance of some of the great architectural mysteries of the india now for this particular things we have a very special personality with us and i take the privilege of introducing today's speaker of the day sri shivendra babu garu who is here with us so this gentleman is not a speaker on a simple heritage technology or else something that's what we are seeing today but he is a personality with vivid portfolios and i'm happy to say that he is also into information technology he is into the history of the country he is into the heritage of various temples like he is actually working as he has worked as uh, with there he worked with various companies like hexaware wipro capgemini and many other companies for around 20 years serving them in various domains and consulting in those particular technologies and as well as services apart from that he handles mentoring sessions for final year b students for campus placements in leading institutions like srm university national engineering college and kovel patti st xavier catholic college nagar coil and etc apart from that he also he support he is also supporting final year placement guidance for iit madras sessions on industry expectations and uh, curriculum which i preparations and for mock interviews also he is renewing his passion for indian history its ancient commerce temple architecture epigraphy iconography by attending seminars and reference books and other things he also traveled extensively through tamil nadu which is also called as the land of temples and these are documented in detail in his facebook tour album we have to certainly visit his tour album also i'll be sharing that link also over here and also he is a part of the tamil heritage trust phd which focuses on spreading heritage awareness across the globe he is one of the phd trained guide and handles alumni away heritage training for teachers and he is also involved in phd site seminars trips to heritage local locations for 6 to 7 days with 25 plus preparatory lectures by participants in prior to 6 months and compilation of them as a tour guide for them whenever they are going to go on the site appreciations also he covered bhubaneswar 
Badami, Sanchi, Kanchi, and Tanjavur. He also does pre presentations on heritage subjects at groups like Satpati Kala Parishad, Tirupati, IITTM Nellore, CCVA Vijayawada, and University of Kerala, and many other places. Also, you can find many of his videos available on YouTube. You can also search for the tagline Babu for Heritage. He is also famously called over there. So his YouTube channel, Babu for Heritage, is a go-to place for heritage videos where he curates content which is available in more than 50 categories. He is also working on entry-level guide for beginners on Tamil Nadu temple architecture, featuring many developments, which is also going to be released very soon. He has completed certifications in old scriptures and old scripts like Tamil Brahmi, uh, Vatilitu, Grantham, and Raid inscriptions, and uh, postgraduate diploma in uh, archaeology from International Institute of Tamil Studies, Chennai. Apart from this, he is a personality having a very strong command on many, uh, what do you say, temple architectures and the science behind that, which is the core competency and the core culture of the Indian history. So with this, I present our speaker of the day, Sivashankar Garu. Sir, welcome to Rotary Club of Vishapatnam, sir. Sir, please unmute, sir. I, I have yes. unmuted, yes. Thank you all. Uh, it was a fairly lengthy uh, introduction. I just gave it and uh, probably it was too long for this introduction. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank the Rotary Club and uh, the Reserve Partner Branch for giving me an opportunity to spread heritage awareness among the elite Rotarians. I got this reference through another Rotarians and then from Chennai, uh, Mr. Balaji, I think I should thank him. And then this is giving me some more area of reach to talk about the temples, the benefits and our heritage. So I thank for giving me an opportunity. So today we are going to talk for around 45 minutes about the subject. And after that, we'll have around 10 minutes of uh, question and answer. And uh, I'm sure if more questions are there, it may get uh, extended. So let me share the presentation. Are you all able to see? Yes, my... we can see. Okay, very good. So, today we are talking about Sita and Mahabalika. What is Sita? Sita is nothing but uh, South Indian temple architecture in simple form. The moment we talk about Dravidian, there are a lot of other heartburn and then political and other issues coming in. So nowadays we have shifted to South Indian temple architecture and North Indian temple architecture as a politically neutral terms. So Sita and Mahabalipuram is our subject today. Primarily what we are going to talk is what are the basic concepts and some of the fundamental structures of South Indian temple architecture and how you can need not go to the entire Tamil Nadu to find out this. You go to only one place, hardly 60 kilometers from Chennai, and then you can cover anything. So this is an architectural university where they have experimented on all sorts of temple forms within a short span of 100, 150 years. <laughs> so we will see how this presentation is in two forms. One, we talk about the overview of temple architecture, how temples are formed, and then, and we see how the various developmental aspects of the temple development evolution has been envisaged and experimented in one single place, that is Mahabharata. 
Now Mahabalipuram is famous a few years ago because of the uh, Chinese premier visit and now again famous for the International Chess Federation uh, happening now. And uh, I think Modi has got a, a soft spot for uh, Mahabalipuram and then he keeps on sponsoring, uh, pushing things. And then in a way, it is a good realization for a very ancient city, uh, which is uh, getting famous in multiple ways now. Right. Now, before we go into uh, the details of temple architecture, let us see how the temple worship and evolution expanded over a period of centuries from very, very old period till current period in terms of location, in terms of method, and also in terms of um, the construction material. So this will give a good idea of how it is expanded. So earlier period during uh, Neolithic, Megalithic period, people were focusing more on natural worship. Whatever is unknown is God. Still now, if you look at this, that is the final principle. But they started with natural worship, like sun, moon, river, rain, which they don't have any comprehension, and then that is the natural God. So this is pagan worship. They worship as it is. There is no temple, nothing. So they worshipped this and then moved on. Later on, the moment somebody died, a stone to the stick and started using it, all the problems of human uh, kind started. So one guy became powerful and the guy wielding the weapon became powerful and the weapon started getting worshipped. So the guy who is having a weapon is the king. Then naturally, wherever they were living in natural caves, a separate cave is allocated for the weapons and other things. And then this used to be the initial temples. Gradually, when they moved from the mountains into the plains, and normally the, this kind of temples uh, used to be under the tree with the roof or with the roof. And gradually, as they started permanent structures, like uh, the during the period, this is somewhere around uh, early centuries, where they had huts and uh, materials under wood, mortar, brick, and other things. Some of the best construction used to be reserved for the temples. So the period temples were in wood, mortar, and brick. Later on, the people had their caves in their mind. They have been living it for ages. They can't forget it. So wherever possible, wherever they see some good openings, now they have found out the usage of iron and other things. They started chiseling. They started making cutting caves, which are solid. So this activity started from 1st century BCE in India with Ashoka period, Varabhat caves. But it started in South India, somewhere around, um, and particularly in Tamil Nadu, fifth, six centuries. Then, some of the, the rocks, what they see as like a shape of temple, they cut it down and then made it into temple. So, in one single rock, they made one temple. So, the logic is very simple. Uh, cut off whatever is not looking like a temple, and then finally you get a temple. That is very simple. But the temples were made. But the interesting part is that even during this time, during wooden martyr and brick and other things usage, there were agamas, rules, on to how to build a temple, what are the components, what are the issues, and, and what needs to be there for what type of a god, what type of a shape, what other things are there. All these are there. So, by the time in 9th and uh, early 8th centuries, people are tired of running around, finding for uh, the rocks to 
build temples and then uh, there are far off so with the advance of chisel and other things now they have mastered the art of cutting stone into blocks and then start building blocks load bearing alignment and everything so most of the buildings were the temples were built of stone and then later on they interestingly they built some multi story uh, temples also okay now the pinnacle is concrete you see now with the latest rcc concrete you can make massive temples massive overheads all this fancy arches everything is possible with the minimal effort so from a small cave we have progressed in this during the 20 centuries of uh, 20 or 30 centuries of evolution but how much of that we are able to see now we are not able to see all these things wooden mortar primarily because this wooden mortar have got a life of around 300 200 years only so after that they deteriorate so one of the oldest thing we find is uh, uh, salvan kupam near mahabalipuram which is the missing link which i was mentioning to the group earlier where the sangam period brick foundation is there which is relating to 3rd century from this uh, point downwards we see all sorts of temples available to us till the latest one the beautiful in concrete with gold plated or painted uh, golden temple in vello so this is a spread of temples we see in terms of uh, temple evolution when it when you see the shapes in terms of shape the early guys were doing huts in different shapes that shape stands in their mind for a long period the moment they start building temples even in in mud or in rock or in brick the original shapes still continue as the roof so if you look at dravidian and other things you have layer top you have square plan hut top you have apsidal plan apsidal plan means bottom plan and then apsidal top you have a uh, rectangular plan with sala or wagon type of thing and you have square plan with polygon top this is a typical dravida temple so if you look at most of the temples that are available in south india or in particular tamil nadu you can always fix it into this six major categories now let us see how the structure of temples progressed from very basic structure to the slowly grander and grander structure the progression the early temples were not made of brick so during early days they were made of wood partitioning and then there will be a center shaft in the middle which was in many places Uh, worshipped as a weapon or a swilinga or a shot so that is how the temple started evolving and gradually over a period it come into shed which is a two part you have a you have a pillar or wall and you have a roof this is a two part structure then later on slowly it progressed into yeah instead of two pillar three pillar you have an enclosed structure and this is how it started evolving and then gradually in nilgiris and other things whatever is is an ornamental and other things the best part of their uh, hut structure become the temple so this is the toda temple see this is the entrance you need to crawl inside and then see the temple so these are all the ancient shapes if you look at any of the dravida temples all the shapes will be there in one form or other now we come to the four part kind of an hut where you have a foundation we have a floor we have the wall and we have the roof and we have the shikara which is nothing but the four walls four poles joined together on the top 
so this is 1 2 3 4 so this four part is being represented by the draupadi ratha during 6th 7th centuries so this is what is the current living one is is represented as um temples which are uh, sculptured in rock the same thing is represented in chidambaram and other places marlik so sugar lag hello somebody is uh, not on the mute please please continue sir i have already muted okay so similarly when you are looking at this kind of an five part uh, structure where you have base you have wall you have roof and then you have yeah a wall hang this is a, like a wagon uh, roof type of thing. so we also have similar structure here in malai bimarata which is around the wagon wall type of thing with a raised roof so most of the structures which are elementary and the earlier used by people that structures are being reflected by the the stone sculptures are ratas during 6th 7th centuries finally the most complex tower kind of an houses these are all represented by the pyramidal gravity gubana of the raja so we have a base you have two multiple tiers and you have a shikara and then we have a stupi kind of it so this is how finally this is the agama mentioned the sixth part of uh six part temples okay so what are the six part of the basic temple we will see now <clears throat> so when you compare a person you think of six parts you have the legs you have the body you have the shoulder you have the neck you have the face and you have the scapel or the shikara or the the crown like this if you are looking at your house you can also visualize the same component here this is for an example i have taken my old house if you look at a temple also a, a temple also has got similar structure like a person let us see how if you see this the legs are represented by this basement the foundation the strong one which bears all the weight the same thing is called as adhisthana in tripti which is the load bearing part the second part your body part is your wall here in in a house the same wall part is there which is called bitti bitti in temple architecture terms so don't confuse yourself with the thing i am just giving for reference if you understand the the major uh, portion there is enough so now you have foot you have the body and then you have the shoulder this is the shoulder where you have a sun shade or roof primarily the function is to ensure that you have some uh, shade here and it also protects from rain water flowing here the same thing is also replicated in a temple this is called kapota or prasthara so this is the shoulder part then what is the neck part this is the the inset smaller portion here it is the balcony and here also you can see a inset portion uh, called griva griva is neck then you have the final head part which is the the top portion and you, you have the head or the face so like a person who has got different faces and other things a temple also has got different faces square round rectangle and the elliptical all sorts of shikaras are there so this is called shikara and after that you have the stupi or tower what is a stupi in a house it is a tv antenna okay here you can see the stupi uh, as a as a pinnacle of this so with this you this is typically called a shatanga vimana shatanga means six part vimana so you can easily visualize the temple as belonging to six major components
No, from a simple uh, temple, slowly people have expanded this, this, this with India, major complex. This is the Mannargudi temple in South India. Can you identify where the sanctum is? This is somewhere here. This is the original temple. This expanded one round, two round, three round, four round, five round, which is like a huge complex. When in Trichy, in Sri Rangam, we have got seven prakaras, and this is the only one temple in South India where town buses fly inside the temple complex. Okay, in seventh prakara, in some areas, the buses also fly. So that is a, like it is like a temple city port by itself. That is how it has grown. So how this is grown and let us learn what are the basic components of a temple and then how they are visualized by our forefathers into various components. If you see this, the basic components of the temple are the Gopuram, Dajastamba, Balipida, and then Vakana Mandapa, and then Mahamandapa, and the Sanctum, which is having the Lingam or the, the core deity. So this can be mapped to various versions of Linga, or a god or a deity or a human uh, lying down, and it is always mapped to the six yoga chakras of the body. So from Muladhara, Swadhisthana, Manipura, Anahita, Visuddha, and Agna Chakra. The Agna Chakra is related to the central part. Like that, people can visualize the temple complex and the whole set of components as a human body with yoga chakras. So let us see whether it fits into So here is a yoga chakra map, and this is the photo of uh, Tanjavur Big Temple, where we see the, the, the foot in the GoPro, and uh, the mandabas in various Agna chakras, and the head and uh, uh, the Agna chakra is in the sanctum. So this is how people visualize, our forefathers visualize this. Now coming to the basics of temple, basically there are three major components or three types of buildings in a temple complex. People confuse each other and then they use different terms. Uh, in South Indian or a Dravida structure, the term used are like this. Vimana means this is the place where the God received the sanctum. It can be in multiple forms. It has got a tower on top and various shapes. So if you take Tanjore Big Temple, this is the Vimana. This is not the superstructure. In, in South India, they call it as from bottom to the top, it is called as Vimana. Vimana means, Mana means measurement. Vimana means perfect and beautiful measurement. Then we have Mandavas. Here, the god comes in for darshan and there is a lot of functions. In South Indian style, they don't have superstructures on top and they have open walls and closed walls. Okay, so you can see a lot of mandabas here in this temple. And the third one is gopuras. Gopuras are gateways and then they are pyramidal towers like this, but it will have entrance, but they are always rectangular in shape. So, a yeah, temple will have one sanctum or one major vimana and multiple minor vimanas for each of the sub deities, and it will have multiple mandavas and maybe having one gopuras or four or this one. Uh, Sri Rangam has got seven prakaras and around 22 gopuras. So, this is the temple components, temple buildings which are related to. South Indian temple architecture. Now we are going to see how this progression happened in Tamil Nadu 
over various dynasties. If you see Tamil Nadu, it has got a special place. It has been relatively peaceful, unlike North India, with only two instances of occupation by non-Hindus. One, during the fourth to fifth, it was ruled for 200 years uh, by Kalapiras. And then later, uh, during 14th century, there was an invasion by Muslims for around 100. And after that, Vijayanagara took over. So bulk of the time, it was in a very protected land. And then temple building has been continuously going on and that has been supported by all dynasties. So if you see how the, the grand temple which we saw so far, how the various components have been built, you can see like this. During early period, most of the temples were built in wood, mortar and brick up to the 5th century. Then when Pallavas came in between 6th and 9th centuries, they did a lot of experimentation in terms of cutting caves, monoliths and structured rock temples. Then the imperial Cholas came in between 8th and 12th centuries. They did a lot of work on walls, ornamentation, great vimanas. And then the one major thing is they converted most of this wooden mortar brick temples into granite temples. That's why we are seeing so much of temples in Tamil Nadu because everything is converted into granite and then they are standing after a thousand years. Then came Pandyas, later Pandyas where they did a lot of work. For them, the mandapas are done, the sanctum is done. What else is there? So gradually, they started working on the peripheral. They started building GoPro, which are unique to Tamil Nadu. And then they built a lot of prataras and mandapas. And uh, later on, Vijayanagaras came in. During the Vijayanagara period, the GoPros became bigger. The mandapas with a lot of roofs around them and prakaras. Later on, the Nayakas, the, uh, the subsidiary people of uh, uh, Vijayanagara generals and uh, Natakote business people, Nagaratas, they built a lot of thousand pillar mandavams, temple tanks and other things, which we see even today. So that is how the temple building has started from 5th century all the way up to 18th, 19th century. Uh, by 18th century, the temple building activities stopped and then with the British occupation and other things, uh, this is uh, a coming into a state. So this is how yeah. you will be able, able to understand uh, how, in what period, what was built and by which dynasty. Now, having told you the six major components of the Vimana or the temple, the first component is your basement. So this is what is taking the load of the temple, the entire load of the granite temple, and then this. What, technically, what it does is engineering. It spreads it in a slope so that your area of contact is wider and then spreads the load so that pressure is reduced. But if you give it to an architect or engineer, he will build a slope. But what the temple builders have done is they have broken into beautiful components and then made it as an artistic engineering. So this is what we call as Adhisthana, our foundation. Okay. Then on top of it, the wall portion, instead of simply being a wall, it has got so much of uh, wall decorations like uh, various kambas, pillars, kumbha panjaras, and then kumbha ladas. This is Nothing but a, a, a kumba, a pillar, and a cage, and with ornamental creepers. Like that, then this is Torana, and then we will have costumes, costumes like the Deva costume with an arch. So, this kind of embellishment will be there in the wall. Then, the next component is the roof part. So, the roof part prastara is basically on the pillar there will be a flat structure. On top of it, there will be a sunshade or, or, a, or a rain, rain water drip. So instead of making it as a simple rain water drip, they made it into a beautiful curved one with arches on top. 
and also there are a lot of uh, buddha places below that so whenever you go to any of the temple in south india you look under this arch in the roof you will see lot of beautiful friezes of bodhaganas and the swans and other thing this is the area which is not affected by uh, the sun and uh, rain and dust so the 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 sculptures will be very very sharp next comes your your portion on the the final neck portion and uh, the shikara portion so this is called griva and then this is the shikara so shikara can come in multiple shape it can be square it can be rectangle or it can be circular or it can be apsidal or many forms so this is the six major components of any vihana now we are coming to the next major building class mandapa mandapas are primarily uh, constructions where they don't have a superstructure so this is the vimana and from here the mandapas start so various mandapas and uh, so uh, once the vimana is done this section is called antarala where there is a passage then there is a small this niche is an antarala and this is the adha mandapa where people stand and do prayer and this is the maha mandapa bigger mandapa where festivals happen and in the front there is a entrance mukasala where the entrance uh, thing is there here this mandapa is designed as a rathakara like wheels and uh, chariots so like that there are any number of mandapas which are between the sanctum and the gopurams so they have various functions then the final one is the gopuram this is a gateway which will be uh, of a rectangular shape with uh, multiple chakras normally uh, between the gateway and the, the gopuram there will be two components one is the balipeeda which all the offerings are given to the god and then this is the vahana mandapa nandi mandapa and in some places there will be doja stamba also so these are the major components of any temple in addition later period this used to be covered by a grand wall just just to protect the temple from invasion and and other things but great ram there are some unique ways of this in kanchi kailasanada instead of just having plain wall what they had done is they have created around 65 mini beautiful temples with fantastic structures and sculptures in each of these mini temples this is something which you need to visit and see in another temple kanchi vaikuntha they have done the prakara instead of having a open prakara they have raised it and then they have covered pillars on one side so that it is roof on the left side wall there is around 250 small panels which is describing the entire history of pallava from the brahma his descendants and then first pallava all the way up to nandi varma it is like a comic strip panel it shows the entire story of how each pallava won over and then how they did the coronation and other this is a historical marker in many of the places in special bigger things the prakara is a two tier structure with mandapa on two levels one for normal people and another for royal and bigger ones so even the prakara mandapa or the wall can be ornamented with so much of information so this in a nutshell gives the temple structure of dravida temple architecture so we saw the three major components vimanam which is the um, abode of god mandapas where gods visit and then where do we perform functions and pujas and go from the gateways and the prakaras around it and these are the basic components and in vimana we saw the basic six components which are predominantly available in all temples now we see 
if you want to see all these complexes in one place, what I would recommend is Mahabalipuram. It is an university of sculptural architecture. It was a major river port during a Pallava dynasty. And during 6th to 9th century, it was their harbor area where Palar giants, uh, the Bay of Bengal, another 10 kilometers from here. There, there are a lot of hard rocks and hillocks and other things. And then in this, they did extensive experimentation in a short period of 100 years during Pallava period. 6.30 to 7.30, they did all the experimentation. And later on, only very minor modifications were done by Cholas and Nayakas. Whatever Pallavas have done, major, it is standing as it is. What they did was, from the old brick and mark temples up to rock at caves, monolithic, ratha, structural granite temples, modern concrete temples, they Pallava, uh, the, the Mahabalipuram has it all. So everything you can see it in one single place in various levels, various uh, varieties. So in, in terms of plants, in terms of types of shikras, in terms of number of tiers, and then arches, and then niches, and the, the sculptures in niches, it has got ultimate variety in this. Beautiful panels. So during the 17th, 18th centuries, gradually it went into disuse. And when British took over, they found a lot of temples in um, Mound or uh, other things. They started cleaning up and then they started reading the inscription and other things and found out, okay, this is belong to this temple and then this is a, a, a king who built it. Like that, they did a lot of uncovering and restoration. And finally, it got the World Heritage Monument Certification in 1984 itself, the first in Tamil Nadu and one of the, the first five in India. So that is Mahabali from Party. When you see in terms of uh, the dynasty which ruled uh, Mahabali Puram, this is Pallavas who ruled from 6th century up to 9th century. And their capital city was Kanjipuram, and their major port city was Mahabalipuram. And there are several kings, but the key kings which are relevant to us are Narasimha Pallava, who did the five ratas, cave mandapas, and everything. His father, Mahendra, was a pioneer who did a lot of cutting caves in, in, uh, in uh, on and around the Kanjiburam and uh, the other areas. But Narasimha concentrated mostly in Mahapalipuram. And after that, uh, his son had a very short reign, uh, and his grandson did one Ganesharata. And after that, the second level grandson, Narasimha II, he is called Atyantakama or Rajasimha. He did bulk of the experimentation in Shore Temple, Adhirinishanda Caves, and all the other things he did. It. By 730, the Pallava building activity moved into Kanjipuram, and then they built the beautiful Kailasnada Kanji, and then started expanding all over Tamil Nadu, in particularly in northern Tamil Nadu. And the building activity stopped in, Man in Mahabalipuram. So if you see this, all the activity happened between 6.30 to 7.30 in a span of 100 years. You can see how much temples we have built. So Malay is a, a brick and architecture museum. And, and it, it has got maximum utility. And uh, it has got options from brick and mortar uh, temples in Sarvan Kuppam. It has got a collection of rocket temples. It has got monolithic ratas where the entire temple is carved out of one single rock. And uh, you have a lot of structural rock temples where you cut the rocks into components and then start building it. This is the shore temple. You have bar reliefs, 
you have many temples you have lot of variation like very many small temples there is a small lion and inside the lion there is a uh, mahishasura mahatni temple there and unusual things like uh, this pavilion we don't know how to name it so variety variety everything available in one place let us see each compound number one rocket cubes so what is rocket this is basically cutting up in a horizontal way and then go inside that means that the the front portion is finely cut and towards the end it is rough and hewn so this is how they start they cut the basic shape and then start cutting in, in deep and deep and then slowly uh, the pillars are removed so this is well finished as you go deeper and deeper the finish level uh, becomes less and in some point or other they abandon and then finish it so this is the sagta which is available so this is how we cut 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 and cut in and then go deeper into the the rock interior and you can judge it by the development of how much they have deep gone in by the refinement in the pillars and refinement in the the clarity so that is rocket cubes so we have 16 rocket temples in malai from the simplest one called dharmaraja mandapam see very basic and of the basic pillars you have the small mandapa and you have a sanctum that's it to the most ornate multiple dimension where you have a sanctum you have a, a beautiful uh, sculptures panels you have ornamental pillars you have pool in front and you have all the shikaras and everything mentioned here so this is like a normal temple we also have many rock temples so this is structural rock temples one in all over the place one is near beach we have three shore temples and one at the ground level and another one on top of the hill on a mountain top interestingly this temple was used during british period as a lighthouse they had a lighthouse structure on top of this and then they were using it for some time we also have monolithic rakas what when you say monolithic what they do is they have a rock like this they cut it down slowly and then remove all this requires a lot of planning it this requires a uh, very very minute uh, calculation and then slowly they they cut the rough uh, rock into temple like shape so this we have nine with different type of shikara this is a shikara one valayan kutam with the, with the spire shikara pidari with the spire shikara and then pidari two with the octagonal shikara see see this this are all experimented in various steps and then stopped at that from top they started and around here they stopped at this now in the in the you have draupadi kutakara and then nakula sakadeva which is at a gajabrishta style we have arjuna uh, in octagon shape this is and then bhimaratha with a wagon uh, wall type and uh, dharmaraja with this one okay and the wagon type so this is the most complete we also have lively himalayan scenes where this is one of the beautiful bar reliefs which is available which which has got humans gods demigods and animals and then all of them beautifully explained in detail this is the largest bar reliefs imagine during uh pallava period this entire thing was coated in a light lime and it was given a color color painting and we had a fountain flowing through this crevice like a himalayan waterfall how beautiful it would have been at that point of time and you have lot of experimentation beyond the rules okay you have this you don't go by any definition 
so it is a, it is a, a, a celebration mandapa where you have a stage surrounded by 11 lions and then you have two small uh, shrines for muruga and indra so it is a totally different uh, kind of a design and they do lot of prototyping and uh, there is a small very small vesra shrine inside the circular pond you have Durga temple inside the lion, and then you have the tiger caves, which we saw now. They had done a sample, and then which is available in a different place. Similarly, there is a grand Mahisha Shri Martini cave. The model is also available here. In addition to temples, Mahabharata has got some, some different articles like the king's uh, Simhasana which is there on the top of the moment with the grand view. Probably he used to review it, uh, the project during his time. And then it has got another one with a reclining bed near uh, Ramanuja Mandapa. And then there is a beautiful pond. Uh, and you have a mini pond, beautiful pond with the sculptured uh, towers. You have many uh, temples. So, Atyanta Kama, which is Rajasimha's uh, title name, has done so much of experimentation in the 8th century in Mahabalipuram, which created uh, a trend. So by the time Chola's uh, take over, the experimentation part is over. What Chola's did is they built grander and more ornamental temples, but the variation in temple structures, components, and everything, followers have reached the pinnacle. So this is one of the temples which I explained in the early Sangam period, which the, the brick foundation on the bottom, this is a Muruga temple, which uh, you can identify by the stone uh, sphere, which is available, which is built around a natural, rock outcrop and this is the front is the front portion is the temple and you have some images of the caves so this is a rocket cave which is uh, there for muruga uh, shiva and uh, vishnu see the detailing including the dwarapala steps and other thing and the top of the embellishment the second one is the Varaha Mandapa, where you can see beautiful sculptures inside, panels inside, and a lot of ornamental. Like that, we have around 15, 16 caves. This is the kind of beautiful sculptures inside Varaha Mandapa. And the next one is the Mahisha Shramatri Mandapa, where you have got world renowned two sculptures. One is Sayana Vishnu and Madhu Kaidaba fighting for him. The other one is the very, very famous Mahisha Saramurthini fighting Mahisha and then he is trying to run away. This is one of the beautiful ornamental caves. Finally, now we come to Pairatas. Okay, here what we see is a rock outcrop, three rock outcrops. But for Pallava, Narasimha, it didn't look like a rock. So what he saw is Saratha. So one outcrop he converted into a lion. The next outcrop he converted into a Gajabrishta kind of a temple and then and an, an elephant nearby just to convert the shape. This long rock he cut up into three, four components and then converted into four major temples, the entire rock. So this is what we saw as Pairata. So we have Pairata, and uh, they are popularly called as uh, Panja Pantavaratas. So they started the biggest one as Dharmaraja, the broadest one as Bhima, the leanest one as Arjuna, and then the one with the feminine bodyguards, they had Draupati. Now they are, they are running into a problem. So there are two more guys, Nakala and Sakadeva. So for both, they alerted only one temple, Nakala Sakadeva temple. So this is primarily uh, due to number. 
and it doesn't have any sanctity in terms of historical things. The Draupadi temple is a Durga temple, okay, in the Kuda Karak type of a thing. The next one is the Nakula Sakadeva, which is predominantly a, a temple for Indra because prime presence of uh, elephant and uh, this kind of an absidal temple is predominantly for Indra. It has got two tier structure. So this is the reflection of temples that were there in wooden marker during the time. Then you have Arjuna Ratha, which is for Muruga. And then you can see that this is a two tier beautiful structure. And with the, you have a lot of fantastic sculptures around this. Then we have the broad base Bhimaratha frame. This is meant for Sayanavishnu. That's why it is broader. So this is a abode for Sayanavishnu. That's why it is longer and broader. And finally, the big one is for Dharmaraja. This is one of where uh, when we talk about apartments, like multi-story apartments, now it is not a 20th century innovation, it is a 7th century innovation. Even guards lived in apartments. So this is a three-story apartment where there are sanctums in all the three levels with the pathway in between. This was structured in, in uh, stone. Later on, Pallavas also built regular many temples are three-story temples uh, with the three sanctums in the Vimana for Vishnu. And finally, the, the last one is Ganeshratha, which is one of the complete ratas. It is called Ganeshratha, but it is uh, for Shiva. This is how it looked earlier, and this is the, the current renovated form. Coming to the structured temple, this is the Valakaneshwara temple on top of uh, the hill. And on the bottom is the Mahishasramathini caves. So during British time, they used to have a lighthouse on top of this. Now we come to the top pinnacle of Mahabalipuram the earliest known structural temple of Tamil Nadu. So this complex has got a very old temple of 6th century, which is called the Vishnu Graham, which is a Sayana Vishnu. And it is there on top of a rock. What they have done is they have extended on that rock and then they have built two more temples around this. One is uh, this temple, on, on facing the western side and another temple facing the eastern side. Okay, Kshatriya Vitra uh, Sameshwaram and Rajasam uh, Sameshwaram. So these are the earliest available structural temples of Tamil Nadu, full complete structure. So there is a mini pond and you can see the remains of the Mahamandapa and other structure around this. So this is short temple for you. And this is another view of your uh, Himalayan scene. People call it as Arjuna Tapas, or you can take Bhagiratha Tapas, or some they say it is Jaina. But the beauty is during Pallava time, this entire thing was coated in lime and coated in multicolor. And they had a pond on the top for pouring water, the steps for going up. And then water used to flow from there in, this, in the natural cliff where the people are bathing and then Nagaraja and others are there. So what a grand site would have been in 7th century with a functioning waterfall. The other beauty of most of the Pallava sculptures is that most of them are functional sculptures which blend with the nature with the dynamic activism. Now coming to the final part, this is the later period uh, brick and mortar and concrete kind of structure called Salasaira Pirmal, which is one of the unnatted uh, Vishnu Dibya Desams sung by Alvas. 
So this is a separate temple, which is of later period. So with this, we cover um, the Mahabalipuram, the architectural uh, university of Tamil Nadu, where you have seen the entire development of the temple architecture from the old brick and mortar to the cave temples, the stone ratas, structural rock temples, and also the modern period concrete temples. So in my uh, YouTube channel, Babu for Heritage, there are some similar titles available. One series is uh, How to View a Temple, uh, which talks about what are the things you can see in a temple. There is four part session on Mahabharipuram in detail. Each session is around one and a half hours. We have South Indian architecture through four great living temples. This is uh, Tanjur Big Temple and then Ganga Kandashwara Using these four grand temples, I have explained South Indian architecture. There is another interesting talk about Konark Temple, how it was built, what are the mysteries. Another one on Kajiraho uh, temples, how they are built. There is a series on Indian temple architecture and temple malls. And uh, like I said, the apartment of gods, the, the first three tier temple in uh, Tamil Nadu, Vaikuntha temple. And also varied subject like Chola as the pinnacle of Indian commerce during so. Like that, a lot of titles are there which are my presentation. In addition, we also have a huge collection of curated videos, which are the best videos in the particular areas in temple architecture, uh, sculptures, uh, heritage, and sculptures. So when, if you want to see more, you can subscribe to the Babu Heritage channel, and you can view and then enjoy the history and do give feedback. So till we uh, keep, keep in touch, you can connect me in this details. Uh, you can connect me over mobile or email, and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. So thank you. Thank you for listening patiently to this presentation. Uh, I think I took a little more than 45 minutes plus. I'm sorry, we couldn't finish it earlier. The subject is a little vast and uh, tough to cover this. Thank you. Such a wonderful presentation, Shushankarji. It's so detailed to the minute <coughs> information related to the temples, and it is really exciting to know our own culture. And yes, we have our president with us, Madhugaru. Namaskar. Sir. sir, unmute, sir. Madhuji, please unmute. Sir. Yeah, Namaskaram, sir. It Namaskar, was a pleasure sir, how are you? to you. Fine, sir. Thank you. I could not be available in the beginning as I am traveling and out of uh, Vizag. But however, halfway through, I joined and uh, I was also a part of the very interesting uh, speech which you had given about the temples. Uh, you have really taken us back on our history, science, and it's a great knowledge to listen uh, about uh, the science involved in building these uh, temples. I think we wish to learn more and uh, we'll approach you once again so that, you know, we can take up some other very good topic and uh, make a nice presentation to our members. And all the videos which are given, I think we should also find time to go through those. So thank you, thank you very, much very much for sparing your time and being a part of this program. Thank you, sir. If you have any questions, you can ask. Yes, dear members, the floor is open for questions. Yes, Rao Garu. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, Rao Garu. Sir, it's a wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, the, the, uh, all, all facts are new to me, sir. I, I, do, I do not know even one item which you had uh, discussed in your lecture, sir. Uh, the query I have is uh, some of the temples are built on hills and hillocks. Mm. They mm. say that it is due to the magnetic effect. They want to mm. uh, channelize the magnetism of the earth. Mm. 
Mm. But uh, there are many other temples that, as you have shown in your presentation, that are built on plain ground. Mm. So, is it uh, how how do we look at it, sir? I Meaning, do hillocks have uh, more magnetism or uh, uh, it... say magnetism is a function of the kind of rock you have? Okay, hmm. certain minerals have more magnetism, and then certain structures have more magnetism. Hmm. But to bring a magnetic strength to such a big temple is always painful. So we are looking at complex solutions, and uh, many of the latest YouTubers are creating this kind of a concept to uh, popularize sensationalism and to have. Uh, more clicks to their YouTube channel. So deliberately, they are creating sensationalism and other things. So most logical thing for Hill is that when you have a temple at the top, that is more visible. Okay. So they tried in different uh, areas. And then uh, Rajasimha uh, saw a beautiful uh, hillet. And then they built a fantastic temple on top. Okay. Then, when uh, Rayas uh, or uh, the Vijayanagara Rayas, when they saw it, they also wanted to build one beautiful Gobram nearby, which is visible from far away. But they started and then up to the base only they finished. And then, like our uh, Mel Kote and other things, it, it, it is uh, stopping at Kalkaram. Again, all these are attempts at visibility and pro pro projecting the grandness to the sun. And after the 18th century, English guys came in and then they said, that, oh, that's a beautiful place. What they did, they put the lighters on top. Okay. And then till in 1900, a fully functional new lighthouse was there. That Olakana Esra Temple was being used as a lighthouse for Mahabharata during the British period. So everybody has got different usages, different views for this. Sir, I have a part B, sir. Uh, in some some of the devotees, when they do the, the production of the temple, uh, some of them touch the wall directly behind the deity. Some temples have a board saying that, please do not touch the wall. Is, the, is, is there any significance? They put their forehead uh, uh, just behind the deity, or on the wall behind the deity. Is there any significance in this uh, act? It's okay. The, the, the point is, when you get Garbhagraha, the concept is that this is not a praying house. This is where the God lives. Okay, what to do is, when you do the stapana of the prime deity, Okay, it has got a lot of structures inside it. We put it and then we pray and then we chant a lot of mandras. And then the entire place is surrounded in positive vibration. Okay, that is what is giving all the power to the idol and the surrounding place. And this is being handled by the pramedical structure on top of it and the vibration and cosmic energy. This is the concept of uh, yes, Sankar. Now, when the guard goes out, so the normally they what they do is they transfer the power from Molapera, the the main thing, to the Uchava Murti, and the Uchava Murti takes the power and goes out. Whenever there is a temple renovation takes place, okay, they switch off the main guard. And then there is a concept called Palalia where they put a small deity with the same power outside and then the main sanctum is closed. Then all the powers is transferred to this. So some of the people have believed saying that I can take some part of the vibration. That's why they are touching on the behind and other things. Rather than that, you don't need physical touch. You can do yoga, you can just keep silently for some time. And then my experience is that you get very good yoga vibration when you sit near a temple. There is no need for a physical touch. Okay, this is mental vibration.
but again people have a lot of beliefs and when you go uh, not up to the yoga level there are certain beliefs like uh, giving a pala abhishekam and other things all this puja and then this one are methods of giving what i have as a scarce item i give it to god there is a concept what is difficult for me what is precious for me i give it to god that is a concept but now it has become a, a ritual so you do whatever you do uh, wrong things and finally you do pala abhishekam you think that everything will be solved okay it has become a very very kind of stuff yes sir yes so if you think on this this is the thing positive vibration and and uh, worship in the form of giving whatever is dear to us as a offering to god thank you sir thank you thank you thank you it was a very good see good um if you don't have any other question i think we can wind up the session <laughs> and mr babu a... i have my question yes while sir. i was traveling down south and uh, you know after kanyakumari i have been to a temple uh, in sochindram uh-huh. where i have seen you know the stones whenever you touch a stone or bang it you know different sarigama padanisa uh-huh. how is it uh, what is the speciality how did, did that uh, get created uh, or uh, so the, the 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 vibration depends on the thickness and the shape okay so the shapes are different the end joints might be different or the thickness of the shaft might be different so they do variation and when you have minor uh, shafts like this with the delta variation they produce different sounds similarly in the presentation i showed about a uh, gopuram and a balipita right yeah, as part of go in that balipita there is a seven steps this is tarasuram temple uh, near tanjavur kubakonam there the seven steps are of different stone slightly different stones and then they produce different sounds when you knock it down with the stone so again variation of material and uh, content and that that, that, that gives uh, different this kind of and musical pillars are mostly prepared in the later nayaka period and they will be in the front mandapas so that is not a uh, chola or pallava kind of concept so this is usually they will be there in the very front mandapas or the ornamental mandapas which are mostly of pandya or later nayaka period. thank you thank you very much thank you. bye great sir so yes sir i would like to hand over uh, to our madhu bura garu the present so, garu it's yours yeah. so thank you mr babu for uh, accepting our invitation and giving us an excellent presentation which is wonderful and uh, we thank you once again for joining this yeah so it's a pleasure for uh, joining this program and i hope uh, you have uh, benefited with the knowledge so we'll be Thank meeting you. again the 17th for a physical meeting at hotel palm beach thank you very much good night thank you thank you it was a good thank opportunity you, nice connecting with all people looking forward to some more inter- interesting yes, interactions from you yes sir thank Definitely. you and have a nice day uh, i think we'll take so much shashankar garu chaala baaga chepparu yeah jagan garu cheppandi శివశంకర్ గారు బాబు గారు చాలా ఇట్స్ వండర్ఫుల్ సెక్షన్ అండి and with this note i take leave of you thank you very much shivshankar garu and thank you wonderful uh, speaker ival actually ga one of the most wonderful speaker man ki ivalu vacharu and at the same time i also recognize the present of our uh, past presidents samay gandhi garu jagan garu and akhi viratnam garu also who are there with us today most welcome and thank you sir and yes my dear friends in rotary i would like to close today's meeting with a happy note that we have actually 
seen and learned most of our wonderful cultures of this country and especially manandarki vastu gurinchi telusu but here the temple architecture is something like way way ahead of it and this is something that we have to start exploring also thank you so much uh, dear speaker for enlightening all of us into this the dreaming world of our science and technology which is which has been a passion for many scientists across the globe thank you once again thank so you. with this happy note i would like to adjourn the meeting thank you my dear rotarians the meeting thank floor you. is open for social networking thank you okay నేను కూడా యాక్చువల్ గా వాస్తవ రికార్డింగ్ ఆఫ్ చేయండి